First step, clear fence line. Second step, pound in posts. <laughs> Next step, roll out your fence on the side of the post that has these knobs. Make sure you put the narrower wires towards the bottom so baby goats stay wider towards the top. Next step is to stretch the fence as good as you can and install fence clips. I install a minimum of three. Bottom, middle-ish, and top. A lot of people like to use four. And on a side note, when you connect two pieces of fencing together, cut them in the middle of your six inch square so that you can wrap them around each other when you go to reconnect. This is good for getting around difficult spots like corners. Okay, fence clips. I do it like this. There are special tools for this, but they are expensive and the cheap ones that we bought, what is it, these? Sort of work. Sort of work, but they're pain. So I'm just going with this. Okay, we got this newfangled kind of clip that I'd never seen before, but it was the only one the store had when we ran out. Finally figured it out. It goes on like this, and it pushes in around there. And apparently that's what this is actually designed for, because it grabs that little funny notch and goes like that. So that's why this tool wasn't working good for the other style. And yes, when you try to put it in on the bottom, it does not work. You have to use pliers, and it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, we should show them the bottom one. There no, we go. shouldn't. Okay. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. All right, here. I'll hold it and you do the bottom because you got a system. She's been doing it. I don't have a system. That, that's why it takes me the so long. The other clip she had a system for. Oh, I did have a system for that. <laughs> we should have showed that before we ran out of them. Sorry. That's okay. The bottom can be hard because it's along the ground. And you can't do the little thing you were talking about. Yes, some college kid designed these. Well, they designed them not thinking about the ground being on the bottom. <laughs> it's best if you get the bottom clip in because then your goat is less likely to be able to slide under the fence. Yeah. So on occasion, when it's like impossible to put the bottom clip in, we do put it one wire up. I've done that twice on a thousand feet of fencing. I did it once. So three times on a thousand feet of fencing is what we did. So, not often. I did mention that it's really hard to put these in, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and they're, they're uh, thicker than the other one. Yeah. Uh, something like that. That's got to be pretty good, right? No, I, I get it flat. Oh. There you go. Because otherwise the goats will get it off. Yeah, that's not coming <laughs> off. So, there you go. <laughs> Even though you got this beautiful fence line now, stretched as good as you can stretch it, it's clipped, it's posts, got the T-posts and everything, the goat can still get out, so your work isn't done. How the goats do this is they put their feet up here to eat this lovely green, and what happens to the fence is it crushes. See how it's bowing and crushing? Now it's only like, what, waist high? Then they put a back foot up here and crush it more. And they just hop over. So they'll do that with any gauge wire. Like uh, they'll even do that with the, the 12 gauge red brand stuff. See what I mean folks? The very moment there's a fence. And they are doing that right on down the line. See, there's one. There's another one over there. This whole field is just not big enough for them. It's always greener on the other side. There's two working on that spot. Now you see this section here is actually a 12 gauge wire instead of 14. And it's still caving under the pressure.
You also want to look for holes in the ground, dips, drainage ditches. I like to put T posts right in the middle of them. As you can see, it's uh, pretty tall. Goat would have absolutely no problem just sliding right under that, especially a baby goat. Kid tested, shepherd approved. <laughs> So basically what I did is I added a couple extra posts and ran a chunk of wire, just doubled it up and angled it along the course of the ground. Any bits I cut off I just tied to the weaker spots. And hopefully that'll do it. it normally does it. If you want to be even more cautious, if your goats are really wily, you can put some large rocks around the bottom. Just don't make your rock stack too high or they'll use it to try and get over the fence. So this is how I keep goats from pushing the top down. See, they put their feet up on here, nothing happens. You just run a post, like a, this is actually a sapling, from one post to another. This one actually goes past it. And when I get the next one, just going to overlap it a couple of feet, maybe a foot and a half, two foot. And that stops them from being able to crush the fence. And even though goats are close relatives to deer, uh, they aren't deer. They can't really jump a 47 inch fence like this. They have to be able to bend it. At least no goat I've ever had can jump it. The problem with using sticks like this is they will eventually rot. Especially the ones on the bottom will rot faster. Like this one, I didn't want to use a T-post because I'm running low. So I just stopped them from being able to push the fence in this little dip with that. So ones on the bottom are going to rot faster. Hardwoods rot slower than softwoods. That one's a softwood. So you're going to have to keep an eye on the condition of your sticks. Okay, so what we're looking at now is some finer details of putting in a gate. Uh, you want to make sure that you leave your wire between the posts and the gate like this. You wire it to these, and if you've got really crafty goats that push on it and slide through, which also be really skinny goats, you run a pole from here to up here. Sorry, I got a lot of glare, it's hard to see. <clears throat> and then you just wire the wire to it. It can be wooden, metal, whatever you've got. And then I just take and I wire using the electric fence wire again. Uh, the wire that I'm using to the gate so baby goats and whatnot can't slide through. You want your attachment pole to be nice and snug here so that there's not a lot of wiggle. Uh, that's about it. Uh, good bracing on your pole is a good idea. I didn't actually do that on this one because it doesn't get used all that much. And uh, yeah, that's what I do to stop the goats from getting through a gate. So that's how I affordably fence a field. Um, as far as a billy goat pen goes, this wouldn't be good enough because billy goats, when they're separated from does that they know in heat, are really, really determined. You'd probably need taller fence like actual goat fence. But this is just field fence, and I often run my billies with my does in here. There's going to be primarily does, maybe some billies. So this is what I found works. It's about as affordable as I can get it. And I hope this video helps you guys. Um, you don't have to use sticks. If you have other things available to you, you can. Just use whatever you've got. I've actually used uh, like old bed frames that people were giving away before to hold the fence up. Sometimes like scrap metal pipes from the metal yard were really cheap at the time. I used that before. But uh, just, yeah, use what you got.